Are you looking to use Kahoot 2022, the completely free version? I've been using Kahoot since it started and I'm gonna take you through how Kahoot 2022 works in the free version. I'm gonna show you the updates that you need to know about. I'm gonna show you how to actually create a Kahoot and I'm gonna show you what a Kahoot looks like. I'm also gonna show you where the results come so you can look and see what kind of answers the students put. Basically, everything that you need to know to run the free Kahoot. I really hope you like the video, and as always, if you do, please like it. I really need as many people to like the videos as possible. Please share it with other teachers, and of course, please comment on it. What do you think of Kahoot uh, when you've used it? Let's get started. One really quick thing before I start, I'm gonna add a menu system in the description. So if you wanna click and jump to a certain part of this video, you can do that from the menu system in the description. So let's just quickly start by going through signing up and making it clear which one you wanna choose. The one that you wanna choose is a teacher account. You're gonna get the best offer if you go through a teacher account and that's the one that we're gonna focus on. So we're gonna click on here and then you need to say which kind of organization. So I'm gonna say, for example, higher education and then you can sign in with your account. Now, as soon as you sign in, if you've chosen the teacher account, you're gonna see this information here. I would avoid all of that. What we're gonna focus on is this one here. Let me go through the free tool. So notice with the free tool, you get only up to 10 players. If you pay five pound a month, you're gonna get 50 players. Now, obviously, one thing to keep in mind is I never get my students to do the Kahoots on their own. If I've got them in the classroom, then I have two or three students sharing a computer or sharing a laptop or sharing a mobile phone or a tablet. So you can easily have up to, say, 30 students working in Kahoot. I normally put my students into groups. If you're looking for bigger groups, you will have to look at the other options. Now, there is a problem with the free account if you're gonna do it on Zoom, because obviously the students are gonna be working individually, and therefore, you are restricted to only 10 players. So we're gonna choose continue with the free account. Now, I just wanna point out, there are alternatives to Kahoot that are also very good and that I also use, and they are not as restrictive as Kahoot. The first one, I'm sharing the link on the screen now if you wanna watch a video about this, is a technology called Quizzes, which I really like and use quite a lot. That's also free as a free version, and it offers more in the free version than Kahoot. And the second one that I'm now putting on the screen is called Socrative. Again, the free version of this. Again, there's a video there if you wanna watch it, how to use Socrative. We're gonna start with Kahoot. And what we're gonna do first of all is we're actually gonna play a Kahoot just to quickly remind you how a Kahoot works. Okay, what we're gonna do now is actually play a Kahoot. I'm only gonna do this for a really short while, but I want you to understand exactly how a Kahoot works and whether you use it in class or in a Zoom session or online, exactly how it would work. So I've got a simple Kahoot here that I'm gonna play, and of course I'll be taking you through how to make one and how to play it with your students, but I just wanna remind you of a couple of things about Kahoot, and the great thing about Kahoot is that we can see in when we play it in the edit view, we can see both what the Kahoot looks like for the teacher and for the student. Now, in normal Kahoot, what you normally do is you project this screen so that the students can see it. And this is where they see the questions and then they can use their mobiles or their computers or their tablets to actually access and answer the questions. So we're gonna do it in a traditional mode very quickly, but then I'm gonna show you a couple of very interesting updates. So when you start a Kahoot, immediately it generates a number, you give that number to the student. So I'm just gonna put the number in. So the students would have to write in the number. Of course, in a minute, I'll show you how I actually made the Kahoot, but let's just start here. And then click, the students will click on enter on their mobiles, they'll put in their name. So I'm gonna write in Russell, click on open Okay, and immediately the person, all the people who have logged in, their names will appear on the screen. So you need to wait for everyone to log in. Once you've got everyone in the class logged in, you simply click on start. Now what will happen is that the question will appear on the screen, so you need to project that, 
and the students will see the question and then they have to choose the correct answer and they're given 27 seconds to do this. So in a traditional kahu, you need to project the questions onto the screen or show them on Zoom, screen share them. So you need to screen share this screen and the students will be answering the questions on their mobiles. They simply access the Kahoot by going to kahoot.it and putting in the number as you saw me do. So I'm just gonna click on the button here, answer that question, I got it correct. What's gonna happen now is the teacher's gonna click on the next button. At, first of all, it's gonna tell you who's doing what scores they're getting, and then we click again next, and the next question will appear on the screen. And this is a teacher-controlled Kahoot. In other words, the teacher is controlling the flow of the questions. And again, the students can see the question projected on the screen or on their Zoom screen, and then they have to, from their mobiles, choose the correct answer, okay? And they simply click on the button, and again, it tells them it tell, gives you a quick summary of how all the students did, how many of them got the question right, how many got it wrong. It then clicks on the next button and it shows you who's on the leaderboard. And then you click the next button and the next question comes up. So that's the basis of working with Kahoot. However, there have been some big changes and I wanna focus on these. And when we go back now to actually creating a Kahoot, which is what we're gonna do next, we're gonna focus particularly on some of the updates that are now available to us. So let's start by looking at some of the important updates. There's been some big changes to Kahoot over the last few years, and I wanna make it clear exactly what those changes are because many teachers ask me questions about them, and this will clarify a few things about the free product. So I've just clicked over to my library. I've only got one Kahoot because I've just created this account brand new so that uh, I can show you from the beginning how everything works. I'm gonna click on play and I wanna show you something. When you see this on the screen, which is very annoying, just click on continue because you don't wanna pay. Notice straight away, first update. You can now play this as a live game or set it for homework. Now we just saw how the live game is played and there's even a couple of updates there that I wanna talk about. But the first big distinction is that you can now use Kahoot, Kahoot for homework. So you can click on a sign and then you can set a start date. You can have all your settings, but we can leave that's all fine. I then click on a create button and that will allow us now to copy this URL and give this to the students and then they can do this for homework. So they don't have to do it live. And that is a big change to the way that Kahoot can work. So in other words, if I copy this and I'm now gonna log in as a student so you can see exactly what I would see as a student. So let's imagine I'm a student, I'm gonna log in I press enter, this is the screen that I see, and what it's gonna allow me to do is to put my nickname, so I'm gonna write Russell, I click on OK, and now the game's gonna start automatically on, on its own. It's not waiting for the teacher because I'm doing this for homework, and I can now start to answer the questions. And notice I can click on the screen. I don't need now to have two devices or to look at the questions because the questions are on the screen anyway. And so I can just click and then it's the right answer. So this is a major change that we can now use Kahoot for homework. Now there is a second major update. So if I come back to my library and I'm gonna just choose one of the games. So I'll click on this one here, play. And we're gonna click on the continue button again. And this time we're gonna click on play as a live game. So we're clicking on this button here. Notice now that when you play a game, you have the option down here. If I just come into uh, show question and answer on player's device. In the past, you could only project the questions onto the screen and the students would answer on their mobiles, but the question wasn't actually on their mobiles. But now we can turn it on so that the questions are actually on the student's screen as well. So they don't necessarily, or the teacher doesn't have to project the questions on the screen because the students can see the questions on their mobile. And that's a big update that really took place because of COVID. 
Now before I actually show you how to create a car hoot and go through the whole press, I'm just gonna click on play again and show you something else. We're gonna again, click on continue. We're gonna choose the live version this time. I'm gonna click on start. And I wanna show you something in the settings, which is a major update that has been introduced into Kahoot when you play it live. The major update is here. It says show question and answers on player's device. You can now turn that on. The reason for this was really to do with COVID. In other words, so many people were now learning online with uh, Kahoot that the teacher wasn't able to project the questions on the screen for the students to see. So in the past, students always had to look at the questions and then answer on their device. If you turn this setting on, both the questions and the answer will appear on the student's device. So that is a big difference in the way that Kahoot works. Now let's look at actually creating a car hoot. We're gonna build a car hoot and we're just gonna add three questions to it and I'm gonna go through all the tricks and all the things that you need to think about when making a car hoot. Now there's actually two ways of making car hoots. We can create one and I'm gonna show you that in a minute, but it's very important to realize that you can also make use of car hoots that other people have created. The whole idea of car hoot is that teachers are sharing their content so that we can save time. So if I come over to here and there's lots of ways of searching for content and I'll show you some ideas later. I'm just gonna put in here simple past tense. English. Let's just write that in as my search. Let's imagine I'm looking for a car hoot that's going to get to practice the simple tenses and therefore you can see lots of options to come up onto the screen and what I can do now is to start look at those and choose which one I want to work with. So I'm going to choose one of these. Let's use this one here. Now what I can do first of all is have a quick look at the questions and the easiest way is I can see the question and if I click on it I can see the options for the answer. So that one would be obviously would be had and if I come to that one here it would be was tired last night that then went and again went to bed early so very easy just quickly check it through now you've got a few options here you could just play this game if you wanted to play this with your students teachers make kahoots and share them for other teachers to use but what i often do is if i find a kahoot that i like i duplicate it okay by clicking here i'm making a duplicate copy of it so i've now got a copy and then what i might do is just quickly edit that copy so i click on edit and i can now go through the questions and see if i'm happy with all of the questions whether i maybe want to add another question in etc so that's the best way because then you've got your own copy what you can also do when you've got your own copy if we just come back to the top of the uh, Kahoot is if you go to the settings, you can give it a name that you want to give it. So I'm going to call this one uh, Russell Past Simple, okay? And done. So you've now made your copy. And of course, as I said, you could come through and edit anything. For example, I could click on a question and change this one from is uh, to will be. I can edit the questions, but don't forget, of course, to save it. So I can take a copy that someone else has made and then I can change the pictures, change the language, change the questions, delete questions. You can always come across here if you think to yourself, oh, this has got 10 questions in it. I wanna add a question, I can add one, or if I wanna delete a question, I can click here and delete the question as well. I often do that because it saves time and the whole idea is that we're sharing content and obviously if I make a Kahoot myself, I always make it public. One thing though, if you're gonna do this, make sure you check through to make sure that the Kahoot is correct before you start using it with your students. So you could even change the amount of time to answer the questions, you can change the answers, you can delete a question, you can change the actual question, you can do all sorts. But what we're gonna do now is actually make our own Kahoot. So we're gonna click on Kahoot, and I'm gonna keep the changes that I've made there. So I've now got two Kahoots, but I'm gonna create a Kahoot from start. So I'm gonna to go to library, and I'm gonna click on create and we're just gonna create a basic Kahoot. So we're gonna click on new Kahoot to create it. And straight away, you can see very similar to what we were just seeing before. We can start now to give our Kahoot a name. We're gonna click here to put the settings in. Let's give it a title. So I'm gonna call this Russell's First Kahoot. This isn't my first Kahoot, but it is my first Kahoot on this 
particular and we can say about London. Just a couple of questions about London will do. And that will do, I'm gonna make it public, I said I always make them public so that uh, students, uh, other teachers can make use of the Kahoot. Another good thing to do is to give your Kahoot an image picture. And one of the reasons for doing that is just simply because it makes it much easier for you to find the Kahoot. So I'm gonna put in the word London and see if we get any pictures of London because my Kahoot's gonna be about London. I can just add in a picture. So Kahoot provides the pictures for me and then I click on done. Now I can start to add my questions. So write my questions here at the top and I'm gonna say, for example, what building is this okay and for this first one notice what i'm actually going to do is i'm going to have an image here and then four possible answers so again i need to add up an image so i'm going to again click on london and we'll choose something different now and we're going to choose for example let's choose this one here okay that's going to be my image and now i write my answers in so i'm going to put the first one here london bridge which a lot of people think it is london bridge but it isn't uh, i'm going to put in an answer here which i'm going to call tower bridge and that actually is the correct answer so i click here i'm going to write westminster bridge here and very quickly to finish off with the last one i'm going to put chelsea bridge here so I've put my four answers in. Only one answer is correct, which is Tower Bridge. I'm gonna give my students 20 seconds to answer that question. And I'm just gonna use the standard points and only one answer is correct. So I've done my first question. Question, four possible answers. I'm gonna add a question now by clicking here. Just a really quick break from the video. I hope you're enjoying the video, and if you are, please come over to teachertrainingvideos.com. Loads more free videos that you can access. You can also find out about all my courses. They're always advertised on the opening page. And please sign up to the newsletter. If you sign up to the newsletter, you get updated with all the blog posts, the webinars, the online courses, and the videos. And at the moment, if you sign up, there is a 12-part free video course in using technology in teaching. And I send you a video about every five days. Let's get back to the video. Now we're gonna add a second question. So we're gonna click on Add Question. Notice that you can either do a quiz or true or false. The other options are not open to you. I normally do quiz, true or false obviously only offers two options. I'm gonna go for four. Now there's a couple of really interesting things. You, if I click on insert image and let's do a quick search here, I'm gonna write London again in to see if we can get, you'll notice that you are only allowed to use a certain amount of free images. Afterwards it becomes restricted, in which case you're gonna to have to upload your own picture. So I'm gonna click on upload here and grab a picture from my computer. So I'm gonna choose this one here and the picture of the London Eye, click on open. So the picture of the London Eye has been added and now again, I'm gonna choose my four answers. So I've written in my four answers. I'm gonna say that this one is the correct answer. Again, I'm happy with 20 seconds. I'm, it's gonna be a standard points and standard, uh, just one possible answer to the question. We've now added a second question. Now I'm gonna add a third question. So I'm gonna click on add question. Again, I'm gonna keep, keep it to quiz, but I'm gonna change this the other way around just to show you that it is possible to actually put answers in as images. Now, if you click here, you are restricted again that you're gonna to have to upload your images. So I'm gonna click here, and what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna work with some history pictures. So I'll just work with these ones here. So I'm gonna click on this one here, Henry VIII, and then I'm gonna click on this one here and again upload a picture and i'm going to choose here queen elizabeth the first and i'm going to click again here and add up another image so i can do this if i want to actually use images in the answers that is possible this is anne boleyn and then the final one just going to click on here again upload a picture and click on this one here and then what i'm going to put in the question this time is who, which one of these, let's sorry, which one is a Tudor king? 
king? Now, I know that's a pretty obvious question because there's only one male picture, but just to demonstrate, I'm just trying to demonstrate the fact that you can actually add images into your questions, but you will need to use your own images. Now, there's a couple of things that you can do at this stage. If Remember, if you want to delete a question, you can just click here and delete as well. If you want to duplicate a question, you can also do that. You can add more questions if you want to. You can't add slides in the free account. What I'm going to do here is just come over to this side and just show you something really important. We can click on preview and actually get a quick look at what the question is going to look like on the screen. So here's the first question and then We've got, they've got 16 seconds, we can go back and have a look at this first, second question and look at the first question. So preview can be really useful if you just want to have a quick look at what you've done. When you've finished, you can click on save. And the great thing now is that you can test the Kahoot. And this is what I showed you earlier. And I will quickly just show you this again. So you can click on here and what that allows you to do on your own is to actually test the game. So you can choose classic mode, which is which the one I always use is classic. But what I am going to do in this one, just to show you something a little bit different, is that I'm going to turn this on. Show questions and answers on player's device. So let's turn that on because last time I had it off. OK, and then I'm just going to happy with all that. Happy with all those those settings. I'm going to click on classic mode. And we're actually going to play the game. So we, what, what's going to happen is that the game will activate a code. Remember, this will be the screen that the teacher has, and this is the students will go on to kahoot.it, and they go to kahoot.it, and it opens up this kind of window like this. They write in the code, the PIN, to join that particular one. And I'm just going to show you something interesting here. So I'm going to click on Enter. I'm going to put my name again, Russell, and then click on OK. And now we're going to start. Imagine that all the students have now logged in. I'm going to click on Start. And the first question is going to come on the screen. And you're going to notice something different. Notice that both the question and the answers have now come up on the screen. Now, sometimes if you've got a small screen, that's not a very good uh, way of working. But anyway, that's the way it is. And I'm going to click on one of the answers. So I'm just going to click on that one now. So that is a difference that you can now have both the question and the answers. Now, the difference when you do that is, of course, you don't need to project the answers to the students. Uh, you don't need to project it either in the Zoom room or project it um, uh, for example, if you're in the classroom on a, on a projector screen, you wouldn't need to do that because the students can see both the question and the answer. OK, now let's finally we've got the game made. Let's just go through the process now of actually getting the students to log in. This is obviously just the test stage. So let me just take you through how the students will log in and do the game. You can close down the test at any point. Just click on that part button there and just leave that page. Come back here. OK. And we're happy with all of this. We're finished with all of these things. We're just going to click on done. And now if we go over to our library, we will see that we've now got Russell's first Kahoot. And if we wanted to actually play this, we would now click on this button here. And we're going to skip that. And remember, we can either set it as a homework or we can start the game. So if we want to start the game, we click on this button here. The game will start. It's almost the same as what you just saw a minute ago. Again, you might want to make a decision whether or not you're going to have the questions on the screen or not. If you're going to do it in the classroom, it's, it's a good idea to turn that off because the students then can look at the questions being projected on the screen or even in Zoom. But if you want to turn that on, then the students can see the questions on their devices. Um, have it often if you're going to get the students to work on their devices and see the questions. And it's only really good if you've got them in pairs. If there is three or four in a group, it's kind of difficult. It's much better if they can look up to the screen and see the questions. So you may want to turn that on and off. There are some other settings. I don't ever use this option of uh, the game option. I always go for the option of the students, um, not the shared devices. I always do this one. It's much quicker. And if I've got the students working in groups anyway, when they log in, they can just put the name of one person in the group or just invent a name for themselves. And we click on classic mode to start the game. Uh, it's going to generate a code. And all the students will need to do is to go to kahoot.it. So let me just quickly show you what the students do. 
So I'm on kahoot.it up here. I'm just going to click on it. This is what the students will do on their telephones, on their mobiles. They will just come to kahoot.it and they will put in the code that's been generated as soon as you started the game. And finally, let's look at some of the other settings. I'm going to show you things like how to look at the reports. I'm going to show you a couple of tricks like how to copy a Kahoot from another person who's created a Kahoot already that's been public. There's lots of other features that you need to know about if you're going to work with the free account. So one of the most useful buttons is the report. So when the students do a Kahoot, then afterwards you can, or it generates a, a report about the students. And I've been using Kahoot, as I said, for a long, long time. And in fact, if you look back here, I used to do Kahoots with over 100 people in them um, because that's what the free account used to offer. Now you don't get anything like that, but you did originally get uh, the opportunity to do Kahoots with really a lot of students. Now, if I click on one, and let's click on this one here with 16 people. So we click on Open we get this really useful information here. I can look at the players and look at their scores. I can look at the questions and see which questions were the difficult ones that perhaps I need to go back and go over and deal with and perhaps give them some more. So it's really good for formative assessment because I can see uh, it even highlights for me which were the particularly difficult questions that I really need to go back over again. And so I love this kind of information that's provided to me. I get a summary of the overall performance, um, which students need help, for example, and which students didn't finish. Loads of really useful information. You can click here and get more further information. So this report page, this information here is really useful, but also so is this information here about the players and their scores, the questions and the average score, so it can help you to understand what you need to go back over again, etc. Really Really useful to make use of all this summary information. It's such a shame now that you can only use Kahoot with 10 people. As I said originally, there didn't seem to be a restriction. However, I am going to highlight on the screen a technology that I really like that is another op option, especially if you're going to do homework based activities or quick checking understanding. A very, very popular tool to be working with, and I'm going to share the link on the screen, is WordWall. And I must admit, many of the teachers that I work with are particularly impressed with that tool as an alternative. It's not exactly the same as Kahoot, but it's got a real gamey feel, and you might find it very interesting. Really hope you like that video. Please come over to teachertrainingvideos.com. Loads more free content and you can see all of my courses on the opening page. Don't forget to sign up to the newsletter. That way you get updated with all the latest blog posts, the webinars, the latest videos and the courses. Of course, you can subscribe to my YouTube channel. Don't forget to click on the bell. Uh, that way you'll get all the updates. And finally, if you do want to contact me, perhaps about doing a conference or doing some training with your organization, you can contact me from the website. Thank you very much. I'm gonna add some more videos onto the screen now that you might find interesting that are linked to Kahoot, other tools that we can use that are very similar. And you might like to click on them and try these videos out as well.